It's been a while since a controller has caught my eye, like the Thrustmaster eSwap X Pro controller. And maybe I'm just getting, you know, caught up in the Xbox Series X, Series S hype, but this thing looks pretty freaking sweet. Compared to their last generation model, it's got upgraded analog sticks, which supposedly have better like resistance, sort of whatever that means, but better physical resistance, improved recentering positioning, and double the lifespan. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. First things first, you got your quick start guide. Uh, a little thing for their thrust mapper. So this is their software that allows you to set up profiles. You can remap the buttons to the ones on the back on the fly. So you're not required to use the software, but hey, it's an option if you want it. And then of course, one of the big features of this guy is the modular, uh, there we go, modular analog sticks and D-pad sort of pieces here. So what this allows you to do is set up more like a, there we go. Dual shock style, two analog sticks here, D-pad over here, or, I mean, I guess if you were like, you know, totally demented, you could put uh, a D-pad over here and then two analog sticks over here. And given that you can actually buy additional modules, I don't think anything would prevent you from Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, of course. If we're gonna cover a modular controller, we gotta we gotta get a get a module here. You could even go three analog sticks if you really wanted to. So this is the SX NXG. So NXG I think is next gen mini stick module, and it comes with a whole lot of nothing. While theoretically you could get modules with different characteristics, there's. Nothing on here that indicates that that's the case. Um, but for whatever reason, this one has a different part number than the ones that were included. I mean, I have seen that before where there's different part numbers for like the replacement one versus the one that comes with it. I don't know. I don't understand why that's necessary, but it seems like that might be the case here. There you go. The, the three analog stick. It's like having a third nipple. It's like there's nothing wrong with it. It's just... Not the usual uh, configuration, that's all. Initial impressions, actually D-pad feels pretty darn good. Like if I was playing a retro platformer or something like that, I could get very comfortable with this. I like the ergonomics of the, I don't know. I don't know what these are called, but the, you know, juddy boys at the bottom here actually kind of reminds me of the dual sense to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, on that subject, no, you cannot use it with a PlayStation 5. It is Xbox and PC only, but it's of course Xbox series and then also Xbox One, the Xbox One series as well. Um, but what I will say is that compared to, for example, I've got a first generation Elite controller here and compared to this, it is very obviously designed for someone with longer fingers, bigger hands. Like even with this in the background here, you can see this is a larger controller. And one of the key features is these remappable buttons on the back here. But to be honest with you, like, look at this. If I'm holding this in a comfortable position where I can actually reach the menu buttons on the top, I can barely reach these ones with my ring fingers and my middle fingers are not really able to do much of anything here. Like I have to go and put my hands at this unnatural angle in order to reach these. So unless you've got longer hands, I don't think you're gonna be finding those that useful. As for the feel of the rest of the buttons, ABXY, really nice. You can actually, you can really hear that sound. Really like the feel of those switches. Easy to press, nice and tactile. I'd say the, the presses on the analog sticks are normal. Nothing really stands out to me about them. Wow. Those have to be among the loudest shoulder buttons I have ever heard. All right. So the triggers on the back, they've actually got two different modes. So you can either, there you go, flip this switch right here and put it in like kind of a hair trigger mode or you can flip it back to the regular position 
and unlock the full travel. The idea here being that if you're playing a, a shooter or something like that, you want a shorter travel so that it can respond more quickly and bounce back more quickly. And if you're playing a racing game, then you want to unlock the full travel for finer control of the throttle. In practice, I'm not sure if I feel like it makes much of a difference immediately, but we'll see. We're going to fire up some games here. Before we do that, though, I should probably have a look at the rest of the accessories that are included in the package. We've got these little uh, convex joystick toppers. Quality of them feels really nice. So you just thread the old ones off. There's actually what looks like uh, a rubber O-ring to keep it from accidentally slipping off while you're playing. It would sort of act as kind of a thread locker. Uh, I don't think that I'm that into the convex top. It's got the same really nice feeling rubberized grip. Something I thought was interesting is they don't provide you another one of these convex tops when you buy a new, uh, a new module. So it only comes with the concave one that's the default. So what that means is if these are actually your preference, you're probably gonna have to buy them separately. Cable, suitably adequate carrying bag. There's a Phillips head screwdriver with a pokey thing. Oh, interesting. I think I figured this out. So you put that in there and pop out the module. And then if you wanted to swap out, say for example, uh, oops, got a lefty loosey. There you go. If you wanted to swap out a trigger, then you could do that as well. Those are swappable too. Neat. This is why it's always fun to unbox things when you haven't actually like done any research on the product. I get to discover the features with you. Okay, well that's cool. Personally, I would like something more grippy here, so maybe that's an accessory that they sell? My lord, this thing is expensive. Hot diggity. Definitely feels premium, like it's, this is a first gen Elite controller by the way, but it definitely feels more rigid in spite of being larger. But wow, whew, it ain't cheap. And it's not even wireless. That's a funny one to me. Like what, what year is it? Nice long cable, I guess. So that's it, time to experience it. But not until after I tell you about our sponsor for this video. The Antlion ModMic wireless microphone allows you to turn your favorite headphones into a headset. It features a 12 plus hour battery that can be charged even while in use and has two modes, allowing it to be used in omnidirectional mode or directional mode with a switch on the mic. It seamlessly connects with PC, Mac, Linux, and PS4, and you can check it out at lmg.gg slash wireless mod mic. Now, slightly less wireless, let's go ahead and connect the controller here. If it's shtick is gonna be that you can change the color stuff, then I guess we might as well do it. You know, this would also be a good opportunity to put to the test just how easy it is. Does one of my kids wanna come help me for a minute? I need you guys to help me pick which color buttons we want to put on the controller. Okay, apparently we're going with blue. There you go. Okay, that was it. We swapped the whole thing out to a blue themed one now. Thank you, darlings. See you later. Bye-bye. Loaded up a couple games here to at least try out and see how it goes. Start with some Doom Eternal. So we're gonna try out the shooter trigger mode here. I can definitely feel a little of the designed for larger mitsness. I wasn't really expecting it, but, oh, you know what? I wonder if part of the problem is just that I'm more accustomed to the traditional Xbox. Okay, that definitely helps. I mean, it's cool that you can just swap that quickly. Like if I'm playing a you know old school uh, platform game or something like that, I'm like, yeah, I really want like a nice D-pad right here instead of having to reach over here for it. Pretty sweet. Oh, wow, I didn't even notice this before. Volume control, uh, mic button, and oh, okay, you got a couple of profile buttons down here. So that's pretty sweet, as well as the map button. So this allows you to remap these without even actually using the Thrustmaster software. One thing I would definitely use the software to adjust is the dead zone. So right now it's a little bit large for me. You can see I can move this a fair bit without anything actually happening. Uh, I prefer dead zones to be as small as humanly possible. Weird. When I'm in reverse, the rumble feels great, but then 
feels really cheap on the forward. Uh, I have no idea if that's just my unit, but it really doesn't feel that great. Yeah, when I break and go in reverse, it feels great, like really deep. And then it's just kind of on the gas. Oops! Yeah, I just suck at racing games. Feels great other than that rumble issue. If I were you, I would check out some other reviews and see if they've had the same problem before pulling the trigger, so to speak. Oops, 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 ah, see you later! Pretty good, customizable, definitely feels quality. The wire's a bit of a bummer and so's the price, so whether or not it's worth it to you is sort of your call, but it looks cool. So you guys can check it out at the link down below and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss more short circuit videos just like this one.